A remarkable piece of four-wheel driving history has been going uphill and down dale in central Otago. It's battered and bruised, but still being hailed for its record-breaking feats way back in the 50s. Here's Michael Holland. Those who crawl the land, climb the land and cling to the land, call this a safari. And today's is as special as it gets, because leading the way, the equivalent of Rover royalty. This is the genuine thing, mate. A 66-year-old battered beauty named Oxford. Enthusiasts would almost get down on their knees and bow to this. Absolutely, yeah. Well, this is an iconic vehicle. It's lived life. It has. It has, yeah. By road from London to Singapore. More than 18,000 miles by Land Rover. In 1955, a group of six ox from Cambridge University students persuaded Land Rover to loan them two brand new Land Rovers. The journey through every kind of terrain. The trucks were named Oxford and Cambridge, of course. Painted dark blue and light blue in friendly rivalry. In Singapore, they get the welcome they deserve as the first motorists to have driven across this great overland route. Cambridge was lost many years ago, while Oxford was eventually tracked to St. Helena Island in the South Atlantic, where it was found rotting in a farmer's field. On its chassis, in the long grass, the wheels had long since gone, the, the canopy was off. Pieced together back in Britain. That's the original paint. That's the original paint. And now spends its days as a beacon for landy lovers worldwide. Oh, you can see the mountains in the hole. No surprises then that the other mainly Series 1 models on this up and over of Wanaka's breathtaking Helene station dutifully fallen behind. At the wheel of Oxford, former station owner Kevin Skur, who carved out this very track more than 50 years ago. She's a beast. Proven beast. Yeah, it starts first pop and the brakes work, they squeal a bit. Every now and again there's a clonk in the drivetrain, we're not sure what that is. Respectfully, who's older, Oxford or the driver? I think the driver might hit the Oxford off. <laughs> <laughs> Only just. Only just, just by friction. At the awe-inspiring compulsory cup of tea stop, though, a piece of number eight wire innovation that not even Oxford can top. A pie warmer. Yeah, yeah, they're in there. Get them out, Janine. They should be hot. <laughs> Beautiful. Absolutely the right temperature. Yeah. And you wouldn't get it at a higher altitude, would you? Seems like a moment in time I don't want to ever end. This was no challenge? Nah. Easy. Yeah, loves it. Yeah, eats it up, eats it up. Yeah. We call it Little Jim. Little Jim? Uh, the Little Jim. We've called it Little Jim for years. So it's part of our family. What is it about the Series 1? Oh, that's where it all started, wasn't it? You know, it's so tough as nails. Yeah, I'm bloody good. I'm a little bit worried about you. You've been riding rough in the back all day. Oh, well, it's good fun. Travelled for 40 odd years in here. You know that saying, who ate all the pies? Yes. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little bit like old people, you know. A bit of daily exercise and a bit of maintenance, they'll go on forever. As will little Jim the pie cart with mum happy in the back. Oh, well, absolutely wonderful vehicles, definitely. Now, Auckland Radio Station, Pamela.